Okay, I'm Steve Croft and I'm here with Douglas Stanford, winner of the 2018 New Horizons Prize in Physics. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What was the first <laughs> thing in science that really captured your imagination? Well, I spent a, about five years growing up um, on a sailboat and li living on a sailboat. And this is an environment where there's sort of physics everywhere. Like there are forces and there are constraints and momentum and inertia. And I think that my first interest in, in physics really came from just seeing how important it was and how it was playing out in different ways all over the, all over the sailboat. Hmm. Um, when I first did really get seriously interested in physics was when um, the summer after my, I graduated from high school, my physics teacher gave me this set of Feynman lectures on physics to read. <laughs> and this was just uh, incredible. It's like... Um, open some doors for you. Open, open a lot of doors. And like, uh, he, he explains things with equations. And you can see that it's really, I mean, it's really there. It's, um, yeah, this is a really amazing experience. So that sort of persuaded you to go from what may have been a more experimental environment on the boat to thinking more in theoretical terms? Yeah, yeah, and seeing the power of these equations and uh, the amazing breadth of different phenomena that you can describe with simple equations. It's much, much more than just like the rope that's connected to the sail. And, <laughs> yeah. and when did you first get interested in black holes and why? It happened in different stages. I mean, I... Like, uh, I, um, I, my father at one point told me that a black hole was an uh, object where all of, the, all of the matter in a star was collapsed into a single point, and I thought that that sounded completely insane. And um, I think I was 11 or 12, and he told me to read Stephen Hawking's book. And this is, I mean, that was um, full of these bizarre, mysterious statements about black holes and the universe. And I thought that was fascinating, but on a different sort of level than, um, than, than thinking about things with equations, like in the Feynman Lectures on Physics. So it was, only, it was really later that I understood, um, understood that these really fascinating, mysterious statements about black holes can really be understood with equations and made precise, and that's... Yeah, it's actually people, but the, the thing that, um, the thing about black holes is that we don't study them in, people like me don't study them because they're like cool, like because you like fall into it and can't get out or whatever, like some kind of astrophysical cool object, although that's true, they are cool. Mm -hmm. um, we study them really because they're, because they're buggy, like they help us try to resolve some bugs in quantum gravity and fundamental physics. So what is it about black holes that particularly appeals to you as a theorist? Well, it's their, it's their bugginess. So they, um, they, they're sort of this, um, they're these objects that challengingly combine um, general relativity and quantum mechanics in sort of opposing ways. And they reveal the tension between these aspects of our understanding of fundamental physics. And so they're, they're a focal point for this conflict. And... Um, hopefully they're the place where we'll understand most clearly how to reconcile the two and um, move on from that to try to apply quantum mechanics to the universe as a whole. Are there any observations that could be made of black holes which would help your um, theoretical work, or is it most most uh, sort of teasing out of these bugs? In, in the yeah, physics? yeah. It's, uh, unfortunately, no. So the, the effects that, that we care about um, in black holes, the are quantum mechanical effects that are very small effects if you stay outside the if you stay outside the black hole. So there's basically no observation that can be done from outside a black hole that will give us useful input. So this is a problem that I mean it's a theoretical problem that has to be has to be resolved in theoretical terms. Um, it would be it would be fantastic and it would make the problem much easier if there was some experiment that we could do to to gain some insight into it, but there isn't. So we have to do what we can and mm -hmm. try to be as careful as we can with the theory. So you've mentioned quantum mechanics and relativity. Uh, does chaos theory come into this as well? Yeah, so the um, black holes are great at manifesting some things in a very simple way. Like they're actually, from the, it, from, in many respects, they're very simple objects. And chaos is an extremely, 
in many cases, an extremely complicated property. It's a property of very complicated systems, and it's normally very difficult to understand. But black holes are objects that manifest chaos in an extremely simple way. Um, and this is, this is sort of part of this funny, funny thing, where on the one hand, black holes are a, a theoretical puzzle that we don't understand fully. And on the other hand, they um, manifest in simple ways some properties that we can understand there and, try, and then apply uh, our understanding to more general. So they're, they're both things that we understand well and that we understand poorly, just different, different aspects of them. Can we apply our understanding of black holes to the universe as a whole? Well, that, unfortunately, I think um, not yet, because maybe the right analogy between the black hole and the universe as a whole would have us possibly behind the horizon of the black hole. And we don't understand very well how to describe the region behind the horizon of a black hole. So the, the research path that many of us are trying to pursue is first to try to understand black holes in detail, including the region behind the horizon, and then apply that understanding to, um, to the quantum mechanics of cosmology of the universe itself. And this has been connected maybe a little speculatively to the idea that we might be living in a hologram. What do you think of that? Well, um, there's, a, there's a precise sense in which worlds very similar to ours can be described by a, by a hologram, if you like, a lower dimensional um, system without gravity. This, I think, is the most incredible idea of the last, well, last while in physics. And, um, and it's true in many cases. For we don't know how to, we don't know how to describe a universe like ours in, in those terms. Um, and so that's one of the challenges, is to try to get something like a holographic description of uh, an expanding cosmology like our universe. This is one of the stubborn problems in, in quantum gravity. Does your work on quantum theory and relativity change the way you think about your path through everyday life? Yeah, I, I mean, one, one thing that I think about differently is the, the difference between, the, difference between the, the past and the future. And this is something that's um, intimately connected with the chaotic time evolution and low entropy initial conditions and um, this is something that I think about frequently just <laughs> just in my daily life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, do you think we'll ever fully understand black holes? Oh, I, I hope so, yeah. I, I absolutely hope so. Um, I think, not only do I hope so, I think we will, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to meet you. <clears throat> yeah, nice to meet you. Thanks.